Because I saw the way that Tony suffered and I don't believe anyone should be left to suffer like that. He lived through eight years of hell. It's very difficult to uh, defend that, isn't it, Peter Saunders? If you, if you have a family member and you've seen the pain they go through, you want them to end their life in dignity. Yes, and one can't help but have a lot of sympathy for Tony and for others in his position. Of course, a lot of people with locked-in syndrome don't take the, the view that Tony takes, and in fact, the vast majority want to live, and that may surprise listeners. But this issue is much bigger than Tony, and the point is that Tony is seeking a change in the law, which is so great that actually it would put many disabled and elderly and chronically and terminally ill people at risk. The problem is if you change the law to allow assisted suicide or euthanasia, then you put pressure on people who are vulnerable, especially those who are depressed or sick, uh, elderly. Uh, you put pressure on them to end their lives so as not to be an emotional or financial burden upon others. I mean, how could you make sure that vulnerable people would not be taken advantage of if you, if you did get your way? Well, to start, <clears throat> sorry, to start off with, um, the elderly wouldn't qualify because unless they're so severely disabled that they can't take their own life, that that would rule them out. Um, and you know, there would be huge um, safeguards put in place. You know, each case would be taken on its own merits. It would have to go through the legal system in front of a judge and it would have to be pre-approved in the beginning. Um, other countries that have legalised it have shown that the floodgates won't open. They didn't open there, so why should they open here? And also, up to a point, assisted suicide has sort of been legalised here by the DPP saying that he won't prosecute people that go to Switzerland. Well, why should only people that are able to go to Switzerland and have the money to go to Switzerland um, be allowed that privilege? It's a good point, isn't it, Peter Saunders? Because it is against someone's human human's rights if they're not able to take their own life. Well, autonomy and choice is really important, but the whole reason we have laws at all is because we believe that autonomy is not absolute and we're not entitled to freedoms that endanger the reasonable freedoms of others. Parliament's looked at it, par Parliament's looked at it right. three times, they've rejected it. But you're it. talking about black and white law here. You're not talking about humanity, are you? We've had so many text messages on this. This is from Dil Gray, tweets saying, as an ex-nurse, there's nothing worse than seeing people in pain and hearing their cries and letting them die to be free from pain is what he wants. Um, Sam Badger's tweeted and says it really should be up to them as long as they have their family's blessing and two doctors okay it. I don't see any problem. It's all very well saying what the law says, but this is people's lives we're talking about. Exactly, here. it's people's lives and that's what our concern is because... Even, uh, if they want the, the, even if they want to end their own lives but they're not physically able to do that, you the, would deny the, them. That. There are limits to choice and I'll tell you why and I don't agree with Jane about other countries because if we look at those jurisdictions that have changed the law, what we see is two things. We firstly see incremental extension, greater and greater numbers every year. But more than that, we see the extension to different categories. So it starts with voluntary, becomes involuntary. It starts with terminal illness, it goes to chronic illness. It starts with adults, it goes to children. And we're talking about mission creep here, aren't we, Jane? Which yeah, sounds but, dangerous, doesn't it? Yeah, but just because these countries have crept that way doesn't mean to say that we will. If they have How flaws... can you be sure, Jane? Well, that's up to us to make sure that it doesn't go that way. If, if there are flaws in their system, we're at an advantage because we can see that our system doesn't have the same flaws. We can do something about it. It would be a, a probably a lengthy process that someone would have to go through to make sure this is really what they want. Peter? Well, as I say, Parliament's looked at this repeatedly. Uh, the, but would you, would you feel more comfortable if a court had to approve it with the doctors and the patient's wishes? Would, would that make you feel more comfortable? No, I don't, I don't think it would work. I think that the safeguards are still not safe, and that's basically what it comes down to in the end. And Jane, I know that you're carrying this on in your husband's uh, memory. Do you think you'll ever get to Tony's wish? Will you not stop campaigning until you do, perhaps? I will keep going for as long as I can. I mean, whether we win now or not, I've got no doubt that it will come at some point. Medical science is improving every day. If Tony had had his stroke 40 years ago, he would have died. And to be perfectly honest, I wish he had died when he had the stroke and he wished that he'd died. People are being kept alive. We understand why he had to be kept alive because well, it, it needs to be done because there are people in Tony's situation that do adapt to life like it and they live meaningful lives. 
But having had his life saved, he should have had the opportunity to decide whether he wanted to carry on living like this or not. And he didn't, which was why when he you know, contracted pneumonia, he saw it as his way out. And it was a horrible way to go, but he was prepared you know, to, to suffer so that he could die, basically.